All right, y'all. I already know. I already know. I already know. I'm going to get fired up during this testimony. I already know. I already know. I already know. From transgender to transformed. I already know I'm going to get fired up during this testimony. But guess what? This is a super relevant testimony because just look at everything that's going on right now in this country and even around the world, but specifically in this country. And this I've said this before. I'll say it again because this is a fact. This is the gayest generation of all time. That's not hate. That's just the data. This is the gayest generation of all time. More people identify as being bi, trans, gay, lesbian, any of that. More people identify as being in that category than ever before. I wonder why. I wonder why all of these movies and all of these television shows, all these you know, you know, rappers and singers, all of these people are pushing this agenda. All of these teachers, all of these daycares. I wonder why all these people are pushing this agenda. And then, oh, look. Now this is the gayest generation of all time. I wonder where that came from. I wonder where that came from. So obviously, obviously, I don't know why I just tapped my head like that, like, like I have a weave or something. Obviously, there's a huge spiritual problem that needs to be addressed that a lot of people don't want to talk about. And it wasn't until recently that my pastor even addressed this at church. I've noticed a lot of pastors don't want to talk about this type of stuff. It's too controversial. They don't want to talk about it, but I think it needs to be talked about. And, you know, I want to ask this question, and this is a serious question, and I want, I feel like a teacher. <laughs> I want 100% participation in the comments. Do you think a person who identifies as LGBTQ can go to heaven? I want you to answer that question in the comments and I really want you to break down why you believe yes or no. Use scripture, support your argument if you need to with scripture, with the Bible. But I want to know what you think. And at the end of this video, I'm going to let you know what I think, because I feel like there's going to be some people who don't agree with my thoughts on this. And that's why I'm very curious to, to know what y'all think. So leave down below and leave what you think down below in the comments. I'm going to let you know what I think at the end of this video. And we can we can compare notes, right? <laughs> we can compare notes. But anyway, let's get into this testimony. Also, make sure that you are subscribed with your post notifications turned on. Um, this is a sidebar, but I saw a video last night uh, of Tim Ross on TikTok, and he was talking. To, he 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 literally said, I can't even repeat what he said, but he was talking about why he uses profanity. And I had never really heard Tim Ross talk about, you know, say curse words or anything like that. But I want to talk about this video that I saw. So make sure that your post notifications are turned on um, because I'm going to be posting that video later on today as well. Anyway, let's get into this video from transgender to transformed must watch testimony. So this was posted a year ago. So just for, you know, reference. The biggest part of my story is that I was in the LGBT community for 16 years and that's the biggest thing that people know me by, transgender to transformed, and there's a lot that goes into it. Um, so I think the first thing I'd, I'd start out with is that I'm adopted. I grew up um, in a religious household, so it was more, you know, you go to church every Sunday and, you know, you listen to the pastor speak, but there's no, there was no feeling. There was no presence of the Lord. I want to pause it right there because we literally I just talked about this on the podcast and so many people got upset. I was I was honestly I was shocked. I was shocked at the amount of people that got upset. We were talking about this on the podcast and we were saying that, you know, people go to church oftentimes as a religious tradition that they do. But there's no actual presence of the Lord in their heart. So at that point, God doesn't care if you go to church. At that point, God does not care if you go to church because you are not honestly seeking him. You have no faith in Jesus. You're just showing up and going to church because your parents are telling you to go to church or because you feel like this is something that is going to make you justified in the eyes of God. But there's no fruit in that. There's no substance in that. And I was, I was shocked at how many people disagreed with that statement. 
But anyway, this is exactly what she said. She grew up in a religious household. They would go and just listen to the pastor talk, but there was no feeling, there was no presence of the Lord there. Hey, that happens sometimes. There, I knew of Jesus, but I didn't have my own relationship with him, if that makes sense. Um, so that's how I grew up in my you know, relationship with God was, you know, I know you're there, but I don't really know who you are. And I was four years old when I started dealing with same-sex attraction and it happened in Sunday school. I okay, hold on. Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> how can a four-year-old deal with same-sex attraction? How can a four-year-old deal with same-sex attraction? I don't remember being four. I literally feel like I woke up one day and I was like 12 and I was laying in bed. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know. If that's, that's probably not a good thing. I probably had, you know some trauma or something that my in my brain that's trying to block out my childhood. I don't know, but I don't remember being four. But I definitely can't see, because I have a three-year-old, almost four-year-old, I can't see her coming home and saying, hey, I'm attracted to this other girl or I'm attracted to this other boy. I, I can't see it both ways. I can't imagine that a four-year-old is thinking like that, that young, that they have attractiveness towards male or female same sex or, or not you know what i'm saying that completely blows my mind that blows my mind i remember it just like yesterday i was four years old um i was sitting there in sunday school and this girl walked in and i remember wow this is the most beautiful girl i've ever seen in my life and instantly instantly i slumped down in my chair like sank in my seat and I was ashamed that I was a girl. Keep in mind, nobody had ever talked, talked to me about attraction. Nobody had ever talked to me about sex or sexuality or anything like that. But in that moment, I knew she's not gonna like me because I'm a girl. Around when I was seven years old, I came out officially as a lesbian. Once again, How can you come out as a lesbian at the age of seven? How can you come out at the age of seven? I don't know her upbringing and she's probably going to get into more of her upbringing. Well, she said she was adopted, right? This is where you need parents to step in. And address this because a seven year old, a seven year old doesn't know anything. Let's just keep it real. Seven year olds really do not know anything in totality when it comes to the grand scheme of what's going on. A seven year old does not know anything. So, how can a seven year old come out and say that they're a lesbian? You need parents to step in at that point. You need parents to address that. You need parents to lead with the Bible. You need parents who are led by the Holy Spirit to step in and address that with love and get that figured out. Because as she said, at four years old, she's already sitting here thinking, oh, wow, this is the most beautiful girl that I've ever seen in my life. But she's not going to like me because I'm a girl. Who thinks that at four? And then at seven, you come out as a lesbian. Okay. Okay. I was a stud, which means I was a girl who dressed like a man and behaved more manly and all those things. At seven years old, you came out as a stud. You're a, you're a seven-year-old girl. How can you dress like a man at seven and behave more manly at seven? Things. <sighs> Um, I came out at school. This is no, look, and this is no disrespect against her. I'm just trying to figure out the confusion that the, that the, that the enemy plants in our minds at a young age. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I came out to my parents. As I grew up, I started dealing with, you know, aside from, you know, the gender identity and, and sexuality, I started dealing with a lot of anger and rage and violence because I was so hurt deep down, but I was the type of person that if I was hurt, I just bottle it in. 
because anytime I had expressed how I was feeling, whether it was about my identity or about God or just anything at all, it was shut down. I ended up in a lot of mental hospitals on a lot of medications for things that I didn't even have. But because people were scared of me and they didn't know what to do to help and they didn't know what they could do, they decided to put me in a lot of uh, mental hospitals, you know, psych wards, medicines, counseling, psychiatrists, all of it. I had, I've been in and out of mental hospitals at least more than 10 times in my life. But so this is what I'm saying. This is not what, it, it don't take all of that. It don't take all, you know, you don't got to send a kid to, to a mental hospital. It doesn't take all of that. The parents just got to step up and be like, hey, God created you as a beautiful little girl and you are made in his image. You are perfect as you are. You need to plant those seeds. You don't need to ship your child off to some mental hospital where who knows what they believe in. And obviously it didn't work. It doesn't take all of that. It's not that complex. So that also played into me pushing God away because I didn't understand why on earth a loving God would give me all these mental issues and allow me to struggle and suffer with these feelings and desires and these thoughts that I didn't ask for. And when I sought help, it became worse. So it ended up making me resent God more. Once I had turned 18, I started transitioning and I started taking synthetic testosterone um, and I was ecstatic. I remember as soon as I took the hormones, I remember telling everybody on social media, I'm finally free. This is finally the person that, you know, I'm finally becoming the person that I was always meant to be. And I remember posting it everywhere, guys, I'm almost there. I was planning to have breast removal surgery. Um, at the time, I was in a relationship and I had been with that person for six years and I believed that this was my wife. Genuinely believed it. After I started transitioning, I... I and I believed that this was my wife. Genuinely believed it. After I started transitioning, I had been taking testosterone for two years. <sighs> okay, hold on. She says she started taking testosterone. <laughs> She's, I can't even talk. <laughs> I'm in shock. She started taking testosterone at the age of 18, right? But she was in a relationship for six years. So you were in a relationship from the age of 12 with a little girl. So these 12 year olds were in a relationship for six years. I'm just, okay, let's continue. I believed that this was my wife. Genuinely believed it. After I started transitioning, I had been taking testosterone for two years. And after I started transitioning, I uh, just remember feeling, you know, I'm still depressed, I'm still suicidal, I'm still struggling. Nothing really changed about my life except for my body. You know, you know transit becoming a man didn't really help me. It just changed how I, how I looked. And so I started looking for answers. I was like, okay, this isn't helping. This is not what I thought it was gonna be. Well, let's just keep it real. She said, becoming a man didn't change my problem. Let's just keep it all the way real. You were never a man. You didn't become a man. You took testosterone, your body changed. You never were a man though. So either way you slice it, you're living a lie. Either way you slice it, you're living a lie. So why don't you just seek the creator and lean on his word and lean on his promises about what he says about you? I need something because something in my soul is missing. There's still something missing in my life. So ended up homeless. And I was working out at the gym at the time and this girl had just, she asked me to go to church with her. And keep in mind she worked there. And 
She asked me to go to church with her, and I remember saying, no, you know, God doesn't want somebody like me in the church. I don't belong there. I didn't tell her that I was trans, and at the time, you, you couldn't tell. I passed very... Mm. I can tell. I can tell. I can tell. Very well, as a male. Um, but long story short, I ended up going that day and I encountered God for the first time ever. I received so much and I, I felt the love of God for the first time in my life. That was November 20th of 2019. So after I met Jesus that day, I pursued him for an entire year. I was reading my word, I was praying, I was still transgender during this time. And a year later, I was living with my ex at the time, um, bought the ring, you know, about to start my life with this person. And I'm in the prayer closet and I'm like, God, why am I not seeing breakthrough in my life? I'm doing everything you asked me to do. And all of a sudden God speaks to me and gives me a vision. And he says, in, in this vision, there was a man and a woman on one side. And then on the other side, there was a man and a man and a woman and a woman. The man and the woman had babies. It was like glowing really bright. And it was like generations went down the line. And then on the other side, with the man and the man and the woman and the woman, there was a red line under their feet and it was black because you, you can't recreate life that way. Mm. So I'm staring at this like vapor, like this vision in front of my face and God speaks to me and he says, I made man and woman so you could recreate and share the good news of my son, Jesus Christ. Wow. And, and he says, if the devil can convince somebody, a little boy or a little girl, a man or a woman, that they are gay, lesbian or trans, he said, not only is the devil going against my will because the devil's will is always against God's will, but the devil is wiping out entire family bloodlines and generations of people that I intended to be born will not exist for my glory. Mm. So I just remember feeling, wow, I've been really selfish my whole life. Everything in my life was based on my feelings. Oh, I feel like I'm a lesbian. I feel like I'm trans. I feel like God hates me. And, and I was wrong. God loved me the entire time. I just had no idea about it because unfortunately his people didn't do a good job at telling me and showing me that. Mm. So I'm just sitting there and I'm crying and God wraps this fiery blanket around me and he says, I love you no matter what you choose, but you have to choose today. And I chose him. I was terrified to choose him because I had been one way my entire life. That's all I've ever known. Um, the next day I went to church and I got set free of the demonic spirit of Jezebel. And I didn't know anything about demons. I didn't know there was a spirit behind homosexuality. I didn't know there was demons behind um, false identities, but there was. And I know now that James Harley, which was the name that I went by, James was a false identity. That was never who I was. But the devil stole my identity from a very young age. And that's why I believed I was born that way, because I was four and I didn't know better. So I can honestly sit here and tell you now, the desire to be with a woman is That was a crazy testimony. I don't, I still don't understand how, how can a four year old, how can a four year old come out as, I, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. So the question, y'all remember the question? Um, do y'all remember the question? I said, do you think somebody in that community can go to heaven? Now, I'm going to play this video real quick, 
it's not a long video at all. I'm going to play this real quick. Because we were having, well, we were talking about, this, this is on the podcast. <clears throat> we were talking on the podcast about, um, you know, once saved, always saved. And um, he was, Elliot was talking about, you know, gay people and gay marriage and, and things of that nature. So I want to play this and then I want to give you my answer to, 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 that, to that question. All right. Like, let's say you believe like, no, marriage should be with man and woman. That's it. And then the world pulls out their, their indoctrination and you're like, you know what? No, I think I believe that, you know, love is love and, and you can marry another man, even though you are a man or you can marry another woman, even though you are a woman and you change your belief about same sex marriage. I still don't think, and this is the, the like, ooh, I don't know. I, I don't think you lose your salvation in that because your belief must be in Jesus. But the devil will use that issue, you know, of gay marriage mm -hmm. to get to the root of the issue or the root of your belief, which is in Christ Jesus. And that's why a lot of people fall away from the church because of that issue of gay mm -hmm. marriage. So, but, you know, since I don't believe in that, I therefore don't believe in this. So I'm going to deny the foundation of everything. Whereas also... You know, and the other way around, because even though you might not, you know, agree with same sex marriage, because I've seen people because they believe in Jesus. You know what? Even though my I don't I'm struggling with this, this belief in, in gay marriage, I'm going to stay. I'm going to still deny that because of my foundation in belief in Jesus. So it can go both ways. But regardless, the core of your salvation, I believe, is your belief in Jesus, as, as the scripture says. Mm -hmm. And again, back to the, you know, the issue of like, can you lose your salvation or not? I think with that same example of like the gay marriage thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's in a way like you're starting to like wander off, right? And I think people can help turn you back, as the scripture says. Um, actually, I think I, let me see if I found it. Yeah, right here. James chapter five. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, mm -hmm. so it sounds like you can leave and come back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. So it sounds like if you can come back, that means you were once a believer and you left. And it sounds like that person, in a sense, revoked his salvation, like wandered away, but is now coming back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So here's my thing. And back to the original question at hand. <sighs> Can somebody in that community go to heaven? Now, before we had this conversation, I was kind of thinking like, I don't know how that even would make sense. If you're clearly choosing to disobey God, how would it make sense that you can enter into heaven with him for all of eternity? But something that I was thinking is like, you know, let me try to understand, and this is going to sound crazy, and I may be wrong for saying this, but whatever, I'm going to share it with y'all and whatever, right? Let me try to understand the perspective of how God might view sin. I think God sees sin as sin. I don't think God prioritizes any one sin as being above another sin. Like, for example... I don't think God prioritizes, you know, LGBTQ and, and that sinful lifestyle as being above any sin that I may struggle with, whether it be anger, pride, jealousy, lust, any of those things. I think he views those sins as being just that, as being sin, right? But our salvation is rooted in our faith in Jesus. And I think as Elliot was saying, Somebody who is struggling or is even, you know, because here's the thing. There's a difference. There's a difference between practicing sin and struggling with sin. When you're practicing sin, you're becoming good at it. You're allowing that sin to overtake the faith that you have in Jesus. And you're starting to put your faith in that sin. And I think when you start going down that road, you're ultimately being led astray. And over time, when you're practicing sin, that sin will pull you away from Jesus so much that you'll start to question your relationship with Jesus and you will fall away. But there's a difference between practicing sin and struggling with sin. We might struggle with sin. We might go through the day and get mad at our spouse or get mad at our kids or, or whatever, or have jealousy, have pride, have lustful thoughts, 
whatever it is, right? But ultimately, our salvation is rooted in our faith in Jesus. Do I think that somebody who is living in that lifestyle, LGBTQ lifestyle, can go to heaven? I do, actually. And I know that sounds crazy, but I think it's a very dangerous place to be in. Because as Elliot was saying, the devil is going to use that as a tool to pull you away from Jesus. The devil is going to plant that seed inside of you to say, well, look at you. You're, you're, you're married to like, let, let's say, for example, I was married to a man, which would never happen. But for example's sake, the devil would, would plant the seed in my, in my heart and say, look at you. You're, you're happy. This is the life that you're supposed to live. You're married to a man, blah, blah, blah. You're happy, right? This is you. This is the real you. Forget about what God says in the Bible about all that. Forget about that. And now that seed of doubt is planted inside of me. And now I start to doubt everything else in the Bible. And now I start to doubt my faith itself and God himself. And that would ultimately pull me away. So I think it's a very dangerous space to live in. And I think that if a person who identifies as being LGBTQ if they're practicing that lifestyle and staying in that lifestyle, I think ultimately they will be led astray. I think they will be led astray. I think they will be led astray. But I don't necessarily think that just simply being LGBTQ is going to send you to hell because our salvation is rooted in our faith in Jesus. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure a lot of y'all are not going to agree with me. And look, I could be wrong. <laughs> I have no problem being wrong. I could be wrong. I, I might be wrong. And that's fine. But that's just kind of how I'm viewing it. That's how I'm viewing it. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, man, I'm out.